welcome back we are in the discussion about wave propagation in different mediums in the last session we discussed about lossless medium now i am going to discuss about lossy medium okay which means if you take this particular concrete wall it is a purely a dielectric no doubt but it may have some conductivity property less conductivity so we call this as poor conductor okay please do remember poor conductor which means it is also having conductivity property also it has a permittivity property okay that is nothing but it is a neither a good conductor nor a good dielectric okay it is somewhat in between that is what the uh, speciality of that particular lossy medium okay now if you try to discuss our uh, maxwell's equation del cross h is equal to j plus do d by do t we try to say this is nothing but jc and this is nothing but jd what is that jc conduction current density jd displacement current density this is responsible in a conductor where this j is nothing but sigma e and this is responsible in free space where this jd can be defined as a j omega epsilon e okay this we learned from the maxwell's equation you should know d is nothing but epsilon e do you remember d is nothing but free space epsilon not e in any medium epsilon e dou by dou t is nothing but a phase shift so we learned j omega the try to recall that particular maxwell's equation modification in free space now if you have a conductivity sigma e is responsible sigma is conductivity if you have a permittivity j omega epsilon j omega epsilon e is responsibility now we have taken a medium which is combination of both which is having some amount of conductivity some amount of permittivity if that is the case why can't you compare okay compare jc and jd okay if you try to compare uh, sigma e is can be equated to j omega epsilon e e will get cancel and try to equate the real term sigma is nothing but omega epsilon if you take the magnitude not the real term if you try to take the magnitude now sigma is nothing but omega into epsilon and if we try to define what is this particular epsilon epsilon is nothing but sigma divided omega now your epsilon double dash becomes the imaginary term okay since it is the imaginary term we took this as epsilon double dash okay that is the a real fact because if you take that particular magnitude i compared that term but actually it is a j epsilon so it should be the imaginary term so epsilon double dash then from this what is our loss tangent if you try to recall what is our loss tangent previously it was epsilon double dash divided by epsilon dash okay right now epsilon double dash is nothing but sigma by omega so it will be sigma by omega epsilon dash will be the loss tangent <coughs> try to remember this now since we told it is a poor conductor its conductivity is very less that is the actual meaning which means your sigma is much more less than the epsilon dash okay the conductivity is very less which means sigma is less very much less when compared to epsilon dash then you can also say sigma by epsilon dash is nothing but much more lesser than 1 even we can also say this particular term okay this is the general as per the definition now what is your substitution if you do your gamma is nothing but alpha plus j beta is nothing but j omega into root of mu epsilon dash into 1 minus j instead of epsilon double dash my last tangent is modified as sigma divided by omega epsilon dash to the whole power half okay this is what the term we are going to have which is alpha plus j beta now since this particular term is much more lesser than 1 we try to say it can be expanded as a binomial expansion okay so let us say using a binomial expansion but don't forget what is our aim our aim is to find a propagation constant okay our aim is to find sorry propagation constant gamma attenuation alpha phase constant beta and then intrinsic impedance eta okay beta and eta these four terms by expanding from the binomial expansion what is the 1 plus x to the power of m okay this is what your binomial expansion considering x is much more lesser than 1 which we learned in the maths 1 plus nx 
plus n into n minus 1 divided by 2 factorial x square plus n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 divided by 3 factorial into x cube plus dot 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 okay and the term is going like this now we try to define if you compare this term with this particular term your n value will be half and the x value will be minus j sigma by omega epsilon dash okay because it is plus x since it is minus that x is included in the minus now if you try to substitute this particular equation as a binomial expansion and the terms we will be getting which results in alpha plus j beta is nothing but j omega into root of mu epsilon dash the outside term is as it is 1 minus j sigma by 2 omega epsilon dash plus 1 by 8 into sigma divided by omega epsilon dash to the whole square plus dot 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 and the terms are going okay so you try to just substitute you're getting just one simple example your one is this one and the nx is nothing but n term you know which is half so that 1 by 2 is here 1 by 2 x is nothing but this term okay just i substitute it then what will be this n into n minus 1 divided by 2 factor we try to calculate x square i made it x square okay that's i just made the same term so try to substitute and you will get the answers now we know this term is much more lesser than one which is highly negligible you just tell one number which is a term which is less, much more lesser than one this is 0 0.01 0 0.002 things and its square will be still lesser always fraction square will be still smaller 0.5 square is 0.25 it will be still smaller value 0 0.02 square will be 0 0.004 okay that will be still less if that is the case if this term is very less definitely its whole square will be still less then we can neglect this particular term and if you just neglect then the remaining term is only these two term now if you try to compare the real term therefore your alpha is something but sigma by 2 if you try to calculate into root of mu by epsilon dash and beta is nothing but omega into root of mu epsilon dash okay just to try to recall your alpha is the real term and if you try to multiply with these two j into j j square is nothing but minus into minus will be plus this omega and this omega cancel this two is nothing but this two sigma by 2 this epsilon dash 1 will get cancelled one more is epsilon dash root of that's what i brought and the imaginary term if you try to multiply this one is with the imaginary term j and j will get cancelled beta is nothing but this particular term now combination of alpha and beta is gamma which you know okay so alpha term is ready beta term is ready gamma is nothing but alpha plus j beta that's what we discussed now next term will be eta which is nothing but uh, root of mu by epsilon minus j epsilon double dash okay and we are trying to modify this particular term is nothing but root of mu divided by epsilon dash if you take common 1 minus j epsilon double dash divided by epsilon dash that can be replaced by root divided by epsilon dash 1 minus j uh, sigma divided by omega epsilon dash okay and still we are going to calculate some more terms once again take this term to the numerator and the result eta will be uh, mu divided by epsilon dash this particular term and then 1 minus j sigma divided by omega epsilon dash to the whole power minus half okay because this denominator is going to the numerator will be minus root is common so it will be minus half now this second term is resembling your binomial expansion where n is nothing but minus half n is nothing but minus half x is nothing but minus j sigma by omega epsilon dash again by expanding using binomial expansion and neglecting the higher order terms we have eta is anything but root of mu by epsilon dash into 1 plus j sigma divided by 2 omega epsilon dash still some more terms are going to come but I am going to neglect because of the higher order terms now what is my aim I would like to find gamma I would like to find alpha I would like to bind beta and I would like to calculate eta okay this is my overall aim of this particular derivation okay so what is that I tried to do I know that my particular uh, equation for jk is nothing but gamma I brought the physics character of the loss c medium 
where conductivity is much more lesser than permittivity. From there, I modified the loss tangent. Then I expanded using binomial expansion and I identified all the terms. Just make a note. And these box formulas are very important to do some simple problems. Make a note. Let us see the next medium, which is a good conductor. So the title is wave propagation in a good conductor. It's a perfect conductor. Let us say metal. Okay. If it is a good conductor, definitely its conductivity is much more higher than the permittivity. Okay, no doubt about that. So it's a very basic physics concept. Previously we told the poor conductor, right now it's a good conductor, good conductor, so obviously it is a reverse. Now the same equation stands hold because I am going to bring a combination of conductivity as well as the permittivity. So let us retain the same equation, but the good news here is since sigma is much more greater than 1, where sigma by epsilon double dash, the dash is nothing but much more greater than 1. So this term is a bigger value, much more greater than 1. So 1 minus that term here, 1 is negligible. Am I right? A bigger number uh, minus or plus 1 doesn't affect. Okay. So from that, we try to recall alpha plus j beta is nothing but j omega into root of mu epsilon dash into uh, let us say that 1 is uh, neglected, then remaining will be root of minus j sigma by omega epsilon dash. Okay, That is what the term we brought. This 1 I have removed because it is neglected because the other terms is the higher values. Now if you try to multiply inside j, uh, if you bring it inside, uh, it should be omega square. Uh, root of minus j omega square mu epsilon dash sigma divided by ops, uh, omega epsilon dash. Am I right? This root is common I took. So the terms retain say omega if you took inside it will be omega square. So that one omega and one epsilon dash will get cancelled. And the result will be j root of uh, minus j omega mu sigma okay uh, no more terms we are having omega mu sigma and then what is this particular j and minus j from our general mass we recall j is a representation for the 90 degree this we have discussed uh, very long back when i was explaining the wave propagation then minus j is a representation of minus 90 degree then root of minus j is nothing but divided by 2 and the minus j whole square is multiplied by 2 this is a general max which is nothing but minus 45 degree then which we can represent as 1 by root 2 minus j 1 by root okay that knowledge you should have that is j 45 degree is nothing but 1 by root 2 minus j 1 by root 2 which is the representation for that particular term now uh, uh, 45 degree cos 45 minus j sin 45 that's what I represented here now if I replace uh, j term minus j root minus j is input 1 by root 2 minus j 1 by root 2 and inside will be root of this term is an input 2 pi f mu sigma okay I can remove that so only one substitution root of minus j I replace by 1 by root 2 minus j 1 by root 2 root of omega is nothing but root of 2 pi f. Now, numerator root 2, denominator root 2 will get cancelled and the result will be j 1 minus j root of pi f mu sigma is nothing but alpha plus j beta. Okay. And if you try to multiply inside and now if you compare real term as well as the imaginary term um, j if you multiply j is nothing but real term j j square is minus into minus will be plus so the result will be uh, if you multiply j minus plus 1 uh, root of pi f mu sigma and if you compare real term alpha is nothing but root of pi f mu sigma because 1 is coefficient beta is nothing but j is coefficient is also root of pi f mu sigma Okay, this is what the term we are going to have. Now, gamma is nothing but alpha plus j beta. Okay, so as per the aim, we discussed gamma, alpha, beta. At the same time, I would like to enter for eta also. 
your eta term is nothing but root of mu divided by epsilon dash minus j sigma by omega which we got from the last equation itself <coughs> is nothing but root of mu divided by epsilon dash as the common and then we represent 1 minus sigma divided by j omega epsilon dash I took this term as the common and since this is much more greater than 1 this 1 will be neglected then the remaining term if you bring eta is nothing but a root of um, <coughs> um, this one will be neglected then epsilon dash will get cancelled this omega will go to the numerator yes well and good uh, then it will be omega mu divided by minus j sigma am I right and then if you multiply and divide by j numerator will get a j denominator j square is minus into minus plus so eta will be j omega mu divided by sigma okay so this is nothing but eta now what are the aims you have to calculate alpha value beta value both are one and the same and the gamma value as well as the eta okay so <coughs> with this we have defined the propagation constant gamma attenuation constant alpha phase constant beta uh, intrinsic impedance of the good conductor of the eta everything we have derived here please try to recall how i did this particular value okay it is nothing but e power j 90 degree is nothing but e power j 90 degree is nothing but cos 90 plus j sin 90 is nothing but 1 e power minus j 90 degree is nothing but cos 90 minus j sin 90 is nothing but minus j e power minus j 45 degree please remember e power minus j 45 degree is nothing but cos 45 degree minus j sin 45 degree is nothing but 1 by root 2 minus j 1 by root 2 that concept i brought and you should know minus j is minus centimeter root of minus j is centimeter minus 45 degree because i just divided by 2 when you go for the angle that's knowledge you should have for real time as well as the angle okay with this i would like to conclude this particular session in the next session we'll discuss about skin effects and the pointing theorem thank you